Ooh, I wonder this. Oh, that's right. I have to catch up a little bit. Kane! Oh. Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I'm sorry I've been late these past couple days. It's just been chaos. Today I had to do my grocery shopping. Do some hoboing. Which is always important. Pay some bills. Sign up for jobs. Which is probably even more important. I found that I ripped my contact lens, so I had to put a new one in. So I'm down to... I have no more contact. Not good. Oh, I mean, you're not, you're not here to listen about my issues. You're here to listen about Super Showdown. Wow, well, it was an interesting show, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, also, Clary Ramos, thank you very much for your comment. Um, yep, Bronx, New York. Is in the house, being from hailing at one time from Staten Island, the forgotten part of the New York City. The Bronx is in the house with Clary Ramos, and the Bronx knows how to play the air guitar. And then and at the end of this episode, I'm going to do a little food review. Or actually, you'll see my food review now. Hello, folks. Not only press the start button too early, but I'm the one, the only hobo, Tom. Here's some background noise. I'm actually watching Super Showdown. They're up to Seth, Seth Rollins and Buddy M and well Murphy, thing on the Street Profits. And I wanted to do this because everyone else has, and it's Lent, so I gave up meat. I try to get myself an Impossible Whopper because normally Thursday is Burger Day for me. So I was in, I'm kind of impressed by this. You can tell it looks like a grilled veggie patty, but it actually kind of tastes. I mean, it tastes like a Whopper. That's kind of impressive. Hmm. I think the thing is... I mean, it looks like ground beef. It doesn't look like veggies, at least. I think everything... I think all the toppings on it... Kind of disguise the fact that it's a veggie patty. I'll tell you what, it does have that kind of smoky grilled flavor. See a little nibble here. Yeah. Texture wise, it tastes like a Burger King Whopper patty. You know what? As a rating, this is actually pretty decent. And all the normal Whopper stuff. Not mine without cheese. You can kind of tell. On sight, there's a veggie patty, but actually it's... I mean, unless you're staring at it like this. I mean, 
from a distance. As well as a charred taste. It's pretty good, you know what? I give this. I have this again? Maybe. Not bad. You get two for six bucks. I have my peace tea. It's again, I gave up soda, so, so I'm going a little bit healthier. I'll tell you what, I might have this again. It actually isn't that bad. I give this a cheeseburger rating. I'd like to thank everyone for watching both this and my Super Showdown review. Get back to that. Remember Friday night? This is actually pretty tasty, so. But these are good. It tastes fresh for some reason. But, uh, so tomorrow I'll be doing my SmackDown review. And then Saturday will be time for AEW. And actually I'm going to have homemade Impossible Burgers. Because I have some Impossible meat in the freezer. That'll come out. I'm going to do my grocery shopping and my Yosh buns. It'll be good. And everyone have a good Thursday. Bye. Yep, that was my food review. I had that when I watched most of Super Showdown yesterday during the day. Caught up on the rest of it today. And now it's time to talk about it. Interesting. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's get to Super Showdown. It was an interesting show. I'll tell you what. The Saudis spared no expense in the fireworks. That pyro budget must be infinite. Yes. It starts off with a gauntlet match. And came out our truth. Showed up. He did his cutest rap. That's pretty cool. And Bobby Lashley came out. And Lana showed up in, in an all gold sparkly outfit. Her little. Hello. Hello. And like left. We'll get to the women's match and and things. I don't know. I'm a red blooded American. I like to see boobies. I like to see booty. Show me a little leg there. I'm happy. These Saudis. I don't quite know, but I'll get to that later. So we start off with Archie and Bobby Lashley, just like I did. And previous gauntlet matches, I'll talk about each match, give that match its own particular rating, and then I'll give the gauntlet match overall a whole rating. Starts out R Truth, Bobby Lashley. Uh, starts out pretty quick. Uh, again, headlock to the ropes, to the shoulder tackle. Oh, the first move of Doom by R Truth. Then eventually, uh, Bobby Lashley kind of said, Nah, yeah, you shoulder tackled me once, not happening. Second time. Then eventually, our truth got in two more moves of Doom. The back body drop and the five knuckle shuffle. Uh, so with that, got the two moves of Doom. Bobby Lashley said, okay, I'm, I'm ending this. He went for the spear. He missed the spear, went right into the thing. He got rolled up. Why so many roll-ups? This is okay. Uh, this match itself, meh. It was actually pretty fun and entertaining. I'll give that much. Our truth is pretty good. Uh, Our truth is selling injury. You got like busted open or something. Uh, actually, that's the next part. But this match, it was good. Eh, it was a ham sandwich. Then it was our, so he survived by Bilashi, so it becomes our truth versus Andrade! And there was no Zelina Vega. Indeed. Yeah, Zelina Vega is going to show off all the skin. That's why. I don't think Alistair Black was there either. I wonder if, I know there's, Sometimes issues with visas and stuff. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, so it's Andrade. Andrade goes right after R Truth. Uh, he does a rope assisted arm, rope assisted arm bar, rope assisted 
Hamlock. This is mean, vicious El Hilo Andrade. Uh, then there was no one home when Andrade flew out of the ring. Our truth goes for his comeback. Uh, like literally, like knock heads. And I think this is when our truth got busted open. Because our truth, you could tell, is like cheek was big. I don't know if like Andrade, like when he was going for his like back for elbow, like hit him in his head. This looked like that weird two percent botch, where Andrade literally like down because like it looked like they collided heads. So, and our truth literally fell on top of him at the pin. Our truth for a while was a bloody mess. Uh, he hurt his shoulder somewhere. You can tell because yeah, yeah, there's a cut going, and the referee actually had to put the. You know, it's serious when the referee actually puts when the referee puts the gloves on. It's like, hey, you, you, you cut, you cut yourself. That was not planned. That was a cut the hard way. This match was actually pretty fun. This part is a cheeseburger match. Then Eric Rowan came out. Oh, I thought this was going to be interesting, but it really wasn't. Uh, Eric Rowan beats up R Truth. R Truth does a flip over the top rope. Uh, eventually, he knocks over the cage, and that upset Rowan greatly. It probably upset the skunk greatly, too. I wonder if they could bring a skunk to Saudi Arabia. Maybe it is a possum. I don't know. I still say it's a skunk. But with that, uh, that just infuriated Rowan. Rowan, like, DQ'd himself then. He just hit him with the, stair, with the steps. And our truth was already a mess. That was shoulder. Something happened to his shoulder. Because you could tell his shoulder was bane. I don't know what happened. Something not right happened. And I'll tell you what. Because Rowan DQ'd himself. Eh. This part of the match, it was really quick. It's a can of soup. And then AJ Styles is next. And he comes in to all the laser lights, just like in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I was psyched for this. Uh, AJ Styles, he's just like... <laughs> He's like, this is going to be easy. He does his little dance off. There's a, there's a cabbage patch in the ring. Just like mocking our truth. Um, this kind of like slaps our truth around a little bit. And then when AJ Styles was decided to get serious, he put the calf crusher in. Our truth taps up. It's kind of what you expect it to be. AJ Styles did it with his flair. I do love the New Japan Laser Light Show. This is a cheeseburger match. And then he's waiting for Rey Mysterio because Rey Mysterio's music hits twice. I'm like, uh-oh. Are we going to have a triple A moment? Nope, he didn't. Because Rey Mysterio got beat up by the Good Brothers. I'll have to mention that match next. Because I kind of saw this in a kind of like weird funky order. But in, uh, So in that match, in this, AJ Styles is like, oh, wait a second. He has to 10. Start counting. And he counts with a ref. One, two, three. He got to three and then see the Good Brothers being beat up backstage by some mysterious person with a long black trench coat and boots. Who could that be? Gong. Gong. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. The Undertaker makes his appearance. AJ Styles has actually no clue what's going on. Um, and of course, Undertaker, it took like five minutes for him to get ringside. That ramp was way too long for the poor Undertaker. Vince, the power of darkness commands you. To make this stage shorter. I think in WrestleMania uh, 
the one I went to in Orlando. I got the number now. But he like came out of the middle, which was good, like half the trip. That's what they should have done here. Or or she or she should she should have just been hiding under the ring. There should have been like even more pyro, and then all of a sudden the Undertaker shows up. That would have made time go by a lot quicker. Instead of like I say jokingly, but I want to say it did take about 10 minutes for him to get to the ring. And then he had all the pyro, all the laser light show. AJ Styles succumbs to one choke slam too. AJ Styles knows how to use a tombstone. They, he should have least on that. Uh, I don't know. Just just seeing that, it was like the one choke slam that like AJ Styles for the most part was still fresh. The Undertaker. He really doesn't need the trophy. Vince, I must appease the powers of darkness. I yeah, that trophy. This, I'll be honest. Oh, might be it might have cinnamon sugar on top, but at the end of the day. It's still toast. So overall, the Undertaker wins um, the King of the Mountain trophy. I'm not even going to bother pronouncing the, the whatever mountain. I, I can't. My Anglican tongue cannot make those sounds come out of my mouth. Overall, um, I was kind of disappointed. Crowd was really quiet, but it's always hard to tell sometimes, especially in open air stadiums. The gauntlet match overall, a ham sandwich. Well, I forgot to mention the Good Brothers. Uh, the OC came out. It's got the War Raiders. This was a hard hitting New Japan style match. The only thing I wish, I wish it went a little bit longer. It could have been more. Granted, it is the pre show. Um, again, hard hitting. The OC, very classic. New Japan pro wrestling style. Again, War Raiders, they were in New Japan for a while, too. They can do the same thing, just like the Good Brothers can. I like the fact that their faces are painted up. They both got good entrances. Um, the crowd was really quiet, though. Like, there were instances where it looked like the crowd really wasn't caring. I think there was the one shot of the guy, like, wearing his, like, earbuds. And just, like, uh, looking at his cell phone. I don't know. That's... It's not necessarily good. Um, but again, the, the turning point in this match happened, so the OC actually successfully defend their, their one best in the world tag team. Mainly because a miscue by Ivar, hit him, he missed the moonsault, and the magic killer came back! Yes, yeah, yeah. I love when they still have finishing moves. And the OC wins. And for the most part, it was good. It was a cheeseburger match. Again, hard for those two teams to really screw something on that big of a stage. I mean, both, I mean, all four men, ultimate professionals. Carl Anderson is still probably one of the best. Viking Raiders kind of matched them, too. Yeah, is what it was. Then the New Day come out to the Miz and Morrison. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, this was probably. The most fun match. Um, you, uh, Big E starts off. He's too strong for the Miz. Big E just does the abstract. He, he spanks the Miz, which is kind of fun. It's always funny to see that. Morrison jumps right into a belly to overhead belly to belly by Big E. Uh, Big E, uh, he, he gets stuck in the corner. But again, because he was stuck in the corner, uh, Miz and Morrison were a little bit too much for him. Kofi then gets in. Morrison, this is one they picked up the pace. So this is really good. John Morrison knows how to take the boom drop, too. I mean, he can really wrestle any style he really wants to. But once that pace quickens up, he's so much better ringside for it. And then they have to, Michael Cole, slam down. Whoa. I think that's gimmick infringement. Well, I don't know. Can you have gimmick infringement on Lucha Underground? I don't know. I think some of my videos are banned in nine countries, though. But that's a whole other issue. I still can't believe he mentioned Slam Town, though. 
then I'll tell you what, the Miz and Morrison, they're great. They did a double team power bomb, double stomp, the no kicks, the into uh, the neck breaker stomp. That looked amazing too. However, there was no Starship pain though. Oh, Star. I don't even think there was a. Was there? A, there were. There, there was no Spanish fly. Oh wow, that's weird. Uh, there was the skull crushing finale, but it got to a two count. Uh, Kofi, can't, <laughs> it was a big ending, a two count. Uh, the Miz breaks up that count. K Kofi does his trust fall. <laughs> and the Miz being the smart heel just said, Whoop, ole! Uh, so Kofi came crashing down. That, that How he has a spine made of jello, as far as I know. Then what happened with Big E is that he got shoved into the ropes, and John Morrison, because the ref was distracted by the Miz, smart heels, used the chair, the chair shot, and then the roll up. This is when the roll-up actually makes sense. When you use a chair shot, which of course knocks your opponent goot loopy, if not out, and then roll them up. That makes sense. That is the best use of the roll-up technique ever. I'll tell you what, the Miz and Morrison are SmackDown champions. And this was fun. I think this was actually... Best match of the night. This was a surf and turf match. And we had Umberto Carrillo taking on Angel Garza. And Zelina Vega might have shown up for a little bit. She might have done... I, I didn't see her, though. Again, this was when I went to go get my Impossible Whopper. Actually, impressive in its own rights. Um, so I missed part of this match, but again, for the most part, it was a good cousin on cousin violence. Violencia, oh, so good. And these two, when they uh, eventually, I like the fact that they started off kind of slow, but then they picked up really quickly. They just started to do all the flippy stuff and everything else. Um, <laughs> Angel Garza ripped his pants off too. I'm surprised the Saudis allowed that, but there are some Saudi women that are probably blushing in the crowd though. Uh, then, then just hit the pace. Yeah, there was a fast pace. A good moves that both people are amazing. I mean, they're cousins. Cousins should naturally want to fight each other. That was good. Then they did a tra trade of pinfalls. Um, Berto got a little bit too creative, though. He had a little hubris. Some, some face hubris. And then Garza, because he missed, um, the Aztec Splash, and Garza kind of won by another roll. -up? Wait a second. One roll up. Two roll up. Four roll ups. That's way too many. They don't even have that on Raw. Uh, this was a fun match, but for some reason, it felt like their matches on Raw were actually better. Maybe Zelina Vega does add something to it. I mean, it was okay. Uh, I mean, I felt I could have done this, though. This is a ham sandwich of a match. And this is interesting, because I was curious how the Saudis, being a very theocratic uh, country, was going to deal with someone who called themselves the Messiah. So remember, according to Islam, there's only one prophet. And that's Muhammad. Seth calling himself a messiah. I don't know how... I forget if he was introduced as the Monday Night Messiah. Or if it was just Seth. I think it was, I think it was just introduced as Seth Rollins. And Murphy. Taking on the street, street prophets. And for some reason, the Saudis know what up and... Uh, we want the smoke means. Either that or they would just chant anything that sounds chantable. You never. I don't know how often they actually see WWE unless they're really rich and get the network. I don't. I don't know if cable's broadcast. I know it's government controlled. I believe. Kind of like the BBC is a little bit. It's a little more stringent. Oh, they have tighter controls and standards. But I don't know. 
again, I didn't hear the, the mentioning of the Messiah. Monday night. Who has to come out? Well, the Messiah has to come out and like destroy Seth Rollins. That would be great. <laughs> the demon, the demon preacher, uh, James, what's his fate? Has to, has to come out of retirement from Impact. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, no, we're Las Vegas. Same difference. Uh, with that, uh, Ford started off hot. Wow. But then he got distracted. Good. De- it was a good deliberate pace to the match. It wasn't bad. Uh, Seth. He jumps into the barricade because I'm the barricade. I'm the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Um, and the Street Profits actually came out in Saudi inspired gear because they're starting wet red. They were kind of like that white, silver, and green because I know the Saudi flag colors is green with the white Arabic on it with the saber or sword. Or cutlass, or, or whatever they, they call they call it there. Um, I'm not well. I I know there's a little difference between saber, cutlass, and sword, but I, I can tell like a falcon. Um, the uh, messer, big one-sided German German blade, rapier. Are a little bit different. Other than that, it, it looks like a saber. I know there's really specific ones. I have no idea what. Looks like a saber to me. I'll call it a saber. So it's the white Arabic and saber underneath. And so they had the kind of silver white pants with like green on the calf. So, eh, they have the plate gave them all the money anyway. Oh, and I wonder what's going to happen for Smack. I haven't heard anything. So that should be an. Um, where was I? Yep. Seth, Seth jumps to the barricade. Uh, classic heel isolation. Um, it's one of them. Dawkins eventually gets a hot tag. He hits, he hits his drop kicks. He has those big guy drop kicks too. Those are serious. Street Profits eventually, they, they double team. Rawls is in trouble. They tried to do uh, Seth Rollins and Murphy. Tried to do the double pedigree. It was counter. Uh, Ford flies, however, gets caught into the barrier. That leaves Montez Williams in the ring alone. Uh, the refs gets distracted by Murphy. So with that, um, it was it was a fun enough match. It wasn't anything bad. There was nothing truly offensive in it. It just seemed like another raw match. This was a cheeseburger of a match. And then what should have been my stone cold lock, but I did get my stone cold lock any right anyway. It was Dolph Ziggler taking on Mansoor. Uh, Mansoor again. He, this is like the one time the crowd really pops for him. And Mansoor is from. I want to say he is from that town in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Arial, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong again. Leave a comment. Feel free to correct me. Just like uh, what's her face did. Then Bronx represents uh, Mansur again. He shoves Rude. Rude eventually he just gets tossed. Rude gets tossed. And there was no Mandy Rose there. There was no love interest of Dolph. I wonder how that plays out tonight. That that'll be interesting. And then it just became a headlock mania because. This is wrestling! Wrestle, wrestle. You can't have a wrestling match with a whole bunch of headlocks. Uh, it did turn into Dolph's wrestle mania. Ask him, ref! Ask him! And then whenever he, he would say no, he just rake his eyes. There was a slingshot neckbreaker by Mansur, which was really good. The zigzag by Dolph Ziggler. Mansur kicks out of that. And there was some counter wrestling, some collegiate style counter wrestling. I like that. Probably more freestyle. Then there was a like a reverse slice spread into a DDT. I had no idea how that. I I couldn't recreate that if I tried. I don't think he could recreate that if he tried. Then he went for a moonsault, but his knees caved in the rib cage of one Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is going to have some rib tape on tonight, folks. 
<laughs> even though it doesn't do anything. Uh, Mansur wins. The hometown boy wins. Yay, hip, hip, hooray. I predicted this. Or I sh this should have been my Stone Cold Lock, but I got my Stone Cold Lock right anyway. It was a better Stone Cold Lock. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And we had Brock Lesnar taking on the one and only pew, 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 Ricochet. Ricochet came out in trunks, too. I don't think he's been in trunks since his days in New Japan. But that's impressive to see something different. Brock Lesnar came out, gave him nearly all the fireworks. So much pyro. I think Brock Lesnar was even looking around. Yeah, I deserve all this pyro. Yep. Uh, Paul Heyman comes out and eventually does an introduction. I'll tell you what, the introduction honestly took longer than the match. However, it went exactly nearly as I thought it would. Uh, Ricochet tried to do one drop kick. Brock's like, bah! Get this, get this away from me. Um, it was going to go one of two ways. It was going to be like an AJ Styles match or a Finn Balor match. This was the shortened version of a... This was actually either the shortened version of a Finn Balor match or an extended Kofi Kingston match. So it's right in between there. Either it was an extended Kofi Kingston match or just a shortened Finn Balor match. But he just swatted away, uh, just started to drop, like toss Ricochet around with, with German suplexes. Then he did some other wrestling move. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't anything great. Hit the F5. <laughs> Total squash match. But yet totally entertaining for some reason. Mainly because I predicted it. This would happen this way. I'll tell you what, I could I could do that too though. I think this is a ham sandwich. Yeah, give me ten thousand dollars. I could do a drop kick to have Brock swatted away. I need some German suplexes. I don't know five. I would do it cheaper for only ten thousand dollars too. Then we had King Corbin and Roman Reigns in the steel cage. Uh, King Corbin comes out uh, with him, all the dignitaries of a king. He's on his, I forget, it's, it's not a dais, because it's a thing like they used to carry the king. Roman Reigns came out. He was pretty cool. Uh, Roman Reigns came with a chain around his neck. Ooh, he meant business. He wanted to lock that cage up so no one could get in, no one could get out. Just like AEW, he was not going to have any of this escaping nonsense. He was going to beat him up inside the ring. For the most part, it happened. This was a pretty straightforward wrestling match. Uh, nothing really incredible happened. Every time, King, for the most part, it, it went this way. King Corbin would try to escape. Roman would catch him and beat him up. Corbin would get the advantage. Repeat, Corbin tries to escape. Roman Reigns catches him, beats him up. King Corbin gets advantage. King Corbin tries to escape again. Pretty basic. Uh, until, of course, <laughs> again, King Corbin hits his moves. A uh, deep six was a uh, deep six. There was no end of days. Roman Reigns again got the spear. In. I think, geez, this is the second time I've agreed with Shim Cornette. But whenever you're in a steel cage, there really should be some blood. Uh, you get tossed into the steel cage. That mouse are just like tear flash apart. Should be a bloody mess. Well, not necessarily. We can tranquil a little bit. We don't need to see a bloody mess. But there should be some. Should be some tooth going on because both those two, their forehead, the too smooth, baby. And a steel cage. I bled like a stuffed pig. And and oh boy, Rick Flair when he was in a steel cage, man. He had a crimson face. He had crimson hair, and he had crimson colored gold trunks, baby. He was bleeding off his toenails. That's how much he was bleeding. That's how much he was juicing. Um, so again, it kind of went just the way you expected. Eventually, Roman Reigns does use th 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 that that uh, chain just comes to effect. Roman Reigns wraps his fist, hits the Superman punch on King Corbin, pins him in the ring. I, I was it was okay. It just got. Well, it wasn't Formula League. It was a cheeseburger of a match.
my hope is that this ends this feud because I hope that's the end of it. Bean. No mas. Then we had Bailey taking on Naomi. And this is, I think, my own one qualm about all the Saudi shows. Bailey came out in like literally a full black bodysuit from like boots to neck to arm and wore like a baggy blue shirt. Who wrestles like that? Well, I might wrestle like that. That's because I'm a fat bastard. And then we came out with like multicolored full body suit. And I think she wore like a yellow shirt. Again, big baggy yellow shirt. Um, yeah. They should, the women, I hate saying this, but they, they should just like boycott like Saudi events. No, we're not going there. Bailey, for all the fun, for all the for all the ways I poke fun at her Romulan villain haircut, she's still pretty cute. Naomi, oh, oh, Naomi's booty, booty luscious, and it just seems to take away from some of the flair and the pageantry of the WWE when they came out looking so plain, so so drab. Just you know, just say. We're not going to have the women wrestle anymore. I don't think anyone threw anything at them. Unlike the Lacey Evans Natalia Matt. I know someone threw a bottle. I want to say at Lacey Evans. So at least it didn't get to that. I'll tell you what, the fans were like half asleep though. They like could care less. They're like, oh, women wrestling bathroom break time. Whatever. Oh. Uh, Again, kind of standard wrestling match. They didn't really do anything too off off the wall. I don't think they really could. Naomi, Naomi didn't do her booty bounce, her booty bounce thing, or booty bounce step attack, whatever it's called. And pro they probably don't allow that. No, 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 no. Uh, Bailey was just Bailey. Kind of standard stuff. Had the the Bailey to belly. Uh, didn't pin Naomi. And Naomi would, would go for who moves for kind of like like a fast kicks. Kind of look. Actually, they probably do hurt if you really do plant them. I don't know. It was kind of a really standard, basic wrestling match. It's just, I don't know. It just took something away. Maybe I'm just so used to all the skimpy outfits. Who knows? You want to see skimpy outfits, folks? Super Target now has their bikini line out. I need that girlfriend to get her one of those little. Brightly colored skimpy bikinis. And uh, with this, and then Bailey kind of won. She stuffed like Naomi's. It was like a shirt spot. And it was just like awkward because, again, these were big baggy shirts. I don't know why. It's because the Saudis don't really want to show like the, the feminine form. And Naomi has a lot to show off with her feminine form. Bailey, yeah, not so much, but still. So, yeah, it was just weird. Like, like, she put her foot into, like, Naomi's shirt and then, like, dropped on her head. Like, something like that. Yeah. They really could have done without this match. It was okay. It was, it was a can of soup. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I guess this was the main event. Dun 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 We have Goldberg Goldberg taking on heel 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 Hurt 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 The Fiend Bray Wyatt And this is gonna be my real down point of the match Goldberg Wood and they did this, I want to say, oh wait, they did this last year, didn't they? Where Goldberg defeated Brock Lesnar. So it's a way to advance the Universal Championship. And it wasn't fun. 
the thing is, the WWE is becoming very formulaic now. They're trying things. Oh, this worked last year. Let's do this same thing. Insert Fiend instead of uh, Brock Lesnar. And we'll just do this whole thing. And therefore, Goldberg, after WrestleMania, can go home for a while. Uh, granted, I, I, I admire Goldberg's ability to get paid for this. I wish I could do that. But it's, it just seemed really formulaic. Uh, Goldberg came out. He speared the Fiend. Fiend kind of no sold it. Hit the hit the uh, stuck his the man mandibular claw mandible claw onto Goldberg. Goldberg eventually fought off of it. Uh, speared him again. Uh, the fiend again tried for the mandibular claw. Goldberg blocked that. Hit probably the weakest jackhammer ever. Because Goldberg, I hate to tell you there, but Mister Mr. William Goldberg, there's two undefeateds in life: Father Time and Mother Nature. You had Father Time working against you. You're 50 years old. He looks, Goldberg, don't get me wrong, Goldberg's utterly amazing. And I wish I looked like him. But muscles just don't work the way they used to when you were 30 or even 40 when, when you turned 50. It's just things fail. And the Fiend's kind of a big boy, too. He is no AJ Styles. And especially after Goldberg's last showing at the last uh, Crown Jewel, when he and The Undertaker had that ouch of a match. Yeah, Goldberg's days are father time saying it's time to collect. But Goldberg actually beat The Fiend. Again, I'll see what happens Friday or later today because that was just weird. That was weird. Nearly predictable and formulaic. It was, I don't know, just there. It's a can of soup. I mean, those two are, are too good for a piece of toast. It wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It just wasn't enjoyable. There is a difference between being terrible and just not enjoyable. So let's see here. Let's go back to my predictions. So I had Brock Lesnar winning. Yes, check that off. I had the Miz and Morrison winning. Check that off. I had Roman Reigns winning. Check that off. I had Bray Wyatt winning. Did not happen. I had Bailey winning. Check that off. I had AJ Styles winning. That was a snooze of a match, though. I had Seth Rollins and Murphy. Winning, I checked that off. And then Sora win winning, check that off. I had Umberto Carrillo winning, eh, got that wrong. The Viking Raiders defeating the OC, eh, got that wrong. I got six out of ten right. Therefore, I was in the head of one Stephanie McMahon. And that was Super Showdown. That was not so shoot, not so super after all. But, eh, I guess it was a good day to spend most of a Thursday afternoon and kind of a Friday morning-ish. So, all that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for watching it. Again, if you do want to have your own video dedication, just like Clary Ramos, then you can always like, share, comment, and subscribe.